Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. In this video we're going to take a look at a smart contract and then we're going to write our own code that interacts with that smart contract so that we can exploit it and take all of the money from the contract. We're going to do this with an online IDE environment called Remix. The first thing that we're going to do is open up our browser and we will type in Remix Solidity. When we do that the first link up top will be our IDE. This is an online IDE that has all of the pieces we need so we don't need to install anything ourselves. By default we're going to have a ballot.sol which stands for Solidity. We're going to delete these out of here because these are just examples that we don't need so delete everything. And then we're going to head over to the uh, Console Cowboys CC Labs GitHub and we're going to grab the code from the reentrancy attack. It's at uh, CC Labs Inc. I'll put the link in the description. We're going to grab all of the code for the uh, reentrancy target. We can paste that in here by adding a new file. This file needs to be with the extension .sol. We'll name it target.sol. Alright, so here is our smart contract that we're going to exploit. The first thing you'll notice down here is that we have a deposit and a withdraw function. Uh, the withdraw function is the same function that we went over in the last video. So you know how this works. Next we have the deposit function which allows us to get money into this smart contract in the form of Ether. And then up above we have a contract target that's kind of like naming a class in another programming language and just sets up a couple variables. So in order to interact with this contract we're going to create a new smart contract We'll name this exploit.sol. And then what we're going to need to do is create a interface to the target SOL. We can do that by copying the function definitions. So first thing we'll do is put the uh, pragma up top. This is just something that needs to be in the top of every Solidity contract. It says what version we're using. Next up, we're going to create a contract interface. We'll just say this is the target interface, since we're interfacing with the target. And then we're going to paste in the function definitions from the target. So here's the deposit. This will allow us to interact with the deposit function. And then we're going to grab the uh, function definition for withdraw and do the same thing with that. In the Solidity programming language, we need to end that with a semicolon, kind of like in C++. We don't really have to do that in stuff like Python, but it's required here. So once we get that set up, we're going to uh, start our contract. We'll name this contract uh, Attack Reentrancy. And then from here, we're good to go to start coding our contract, interact with the target, and exploit it. Within Remix, we are going to deploy our smart contract. It'll get deployed to a local JavaScript VM. Once we deploy it, we will get a target address. We should copy this here since that will be the address we need to target the smart contract. Then we will set up our bank address here. We'll use our target interface we put above. We'll call that bank address. And we will set it to the address of the contract that we just deployed, which would usually be a address on the blockchain. Now we're going to set up a unit of value we're going to use as our amount. When we're sending the uh, ether across, we're going to put one ether as our amount. 
and we'll next set up our deposit function so that we can deposit our one ether. Inside of our deposit function, we're going to use our bank address interface we created, and we're going to use the deposit function from the interface. We're going to use the value of the amount that we put above, which is the one ether, and then it's going to need that extra set of parentheses because we are executing that. Next up, let's create a function that will get the balance that we just deposited to the account, and then we're going to test that out before we move further. So we will name a function get target balance, and we're going to make sure that that returns our value, and that it's a public function. So we're going to return a uint value of our ether. So we'll say return and we'll say our address. Our address is going to be our bank address from above. And then we're going to use dot balance to get the balance of the contract. And then from there, we can deploy this. So we'll hit the deploy button. And that puts a new contract down there we can interact with. So right here, we're going to put one ether in the value there. We need to do that in Remix or else it won't work correctly and we'll put the value type ether. So if we do deposit, we can see the debugging information down here and what happened. We scroll down. And right there you see the value of one ether. When we did the get balance, we got back one ether. We'll hit the deposit again, we'll hit the to get balance again, and we get two ether. So this is just the balance of the current contract. You'll see that we have a few addresses up here. One has some value taken out that we just used, and the others still have 100 ether for us to use. Now that you kind of got the idea how this is coded, I'm going to paste in a few functions to speed it up. So the first function is the attack function. All this does is use the bank interface and withdraw the amount. The amount is the one ether above. The next is going to be what we were talking about before, the fallback function. This function will automatically be called when somebody's sending money to us. So we don't even need a name for this function. We're going to mark it payable so we can accept money. And then we're going to say if the bank address's balance is less than the amount that we're asking for, which is one ether, then we're going to call the withdraw function again. And this is going to create our recursive loop. Okay, I'm going to adjust this a little so you can see everything and move up the IDE. I need to add in another bracket down there so we don't get an error. And I'm going to paste in one more function. All this function says is if this address has a balance, transfer the balance to this address. So that way we can retrieve our stolen funds after we perform an attack. We're going to delete the old contract, press Control S to save it, and then redeploy and we'll see our new retrieve stolen funds. So what we're going to do is we're going to deposit our amount. So now we have three ether in the balance of the bank. And we're going to grab one of the other addresses and use the actual um, deposit function on the bank, deposit 20 ether using that account. So that's a whole other user's account. We now have 79 on that. We're going to deposit some money with another account that has 100 ether. And now we have 87 on that one. And you'll see we have 35 ether total. But our original account only has 96. This is our attacker's account. So we'll hit attack. And once we do that, we'll see that it's paused as it's going through its recursive loop. It'll eventually come back. There it goes. And now if we get target balance, the bank is empty. But we don't have our funds up here. So we're going to run our retrieve stolen funds. If we look up there now, we have 131 ether. We have retrieved our ether back and taken the other ether from the other accounts. If we had just run the withdraw function normally, we'd only be able to retrieve our initial three ether that we took out, but because we ran this attack and never updated our balance, we were able to steal everybody else's money as well, 
And now if they went to take their money out, they would be unable as there's no more money in that contract or that bank. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you understand some smart contract security issues. We're going to go into some more later on, but this was just kind of an intro and the first type of attack that I find kind of interesting and I've been doing some research on. If you want to do a little more research on this attack, look up the DAO attack on the Ethereum network, which is originally why we have Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. And you'll find a little more information on this attack and how it was used in the wild. Um, the next attack we'll cover is probably going to be integer overflow and integer underflow vulnerabilities, building onto this example of this bank. If you learned something in this video and you want to see the next video, please subscribe and hit the like button below. It really helps. And uh, have a nice day.